Steve Simon runs the Women's Tennis Association, creative and well-regarded in the industry. He was brought in in 2015 to jumpstart WTA's flat financial growth. One of the things when I came on in, and it's the foundation for everything that I'm going to do, is I believe you have to evolve. Steve, when you took over the All Women's Tour in 2015, one of the things you really wanted to fix was the structure of the tour calendar particularly towards the end of the season, and also getting your players healthy. Right. It's been three years. What sort of progress have you made so far? Well, it's a, it's, it's a work in progress because change is obviously very, very difficult, especially when you've got established events and infrastructure and bricks and mortar and everything. It's, it's not quick. But I think we've made some very, very good progress. Uh, we have some real alignment with the calendar that's going to be coming forth uh, next year in 2019. What can we expect to see? And, and you'll see the WTA finals uh, moving back a week in the calendar, which will create a better window there. And I think that there's going to also be some, some further shuffling, especially in this year-end part of the calendar, where we can create a little longer break after the U.S. Open to allow the players to rest before they finish the year in swing and then come to Asia and finish the year in Asia in a very progressive manner that will, will keep them healthy and allow them to play healthy over here with the proper rest and everything else they need. Whether it's uh, changing the tour calendar or trying to reduce the time it takes to play a match, it's always controversial and challenging to try to make these changes, something that players and sponsors are used to. What sort of leadership are you providing behind the scenes to get people to embrace these changes? If your track record has shown that the recommendations you make have moved the needle forward and you have more wins than losses, they have a tendency to accept your, your ideas a little bit more. But it is always about the selling process and the vision and being able to go in and say, look, here's where we are today. I think this is where we need to get to, which we can all agree to, and here are the steps we need to do to, to get there. And there's going to mean these changes. Here's the good parts, here's going to be the investment parts or the bad parts you're going to have to go to. But if we're going to continue to evolve and grow, we've got to be willing to do this. And it's being able to have those honest conversations with everybody. It's important to have relationships so that they, they trust you and they know you're not trying to have a certain angle or get away with something. And I think that um, throughout the organization, we have, uh, we have a lot of trust, a lot of, a lot of confidence, and um, people are willing to engage in conversation and, and talk and get comfortable with things that maybe aren't in the comfort zone all the time. What do you do with people who don't buy into your idea? Well, if, if they don't buy into them, we obviously respect their position. Um, but we're not going to let that stop us from moving where we need to go to. Um, you need to get on the train and join <laughs> us or well it was nice nice visiting with you. I hope we can work with you down the road but we're going to keep on keep on going. How does it feel like to be the man heading the all women's tour? The man? <laughs> uh, you know, when I came on in, it was, uh, I said, it was a, a very humbling uh, thing to be asked to do it. Uh, it wasn't something, I was very happy doing what I was doing. I wasn't looking for a new job. Um, and, and it was humbling to be asked to be provided a platform like this to get off the uh, area of being in the cheap seats and always saying what you think they should do and actually be in a position to maybe affect it and move the sport and make it better than when you, you got there. So, um, and this one's unique because it's not only tennis, but as you said, it's also women's sport. And one of the things I think that has to happen in this world is that people such as my, myself, that's uh, uh, the male gender, um, we, have to, we have to step up and truly show equality and begin making changes because they're the right thing to do. As CEO of WTA, what's your number one on your priority list? for 2019? I never have just one because there's a, a list. Um, I think I drive the staff crazy. Um, I think we call it controlled chaos because we're always doing so many things. But it is to, it is to continue pushing everything forward. And that agenda is towards, um, I want this, this, this property, the WTA property, to be considered on the equal of other world-class properties. It's not the number one women's sport property. It's a, it's a, it's a property, irrespective of the gender. And, and for us to be able to walk into that boardroom 
and we're being looked at on an equal basis with the Super Bowls and the Olympics and the World Cups and everything else which is a brand, not a male or female brand, it's a brand. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.